Welcome to River Point Church training video series. Today we are going to talk about the sandbox. This is the sandbox. So the first thing that we want to do when we're uh, getting this set up to go to record services, we want to make sure we're unboxing it. And you do that just by twisting these little uh, doodads on the side here. You twist it and then it should pop off like that. So the sandbox is going to go in this area over here, back by where those two monitors are hanging off the wall. When we get the sandbox over here, uh, plugging it in is not hard. <clears throat> You're basically just playing uh, match the cable to the correct port. So you'll notice back here, on the back of the sandbox, each port is labeled. So you've got video one, video two, control out, audio. So those are the ports that are labeled. And over here, you've got this mess of cable, each of which are labeled as well. TC in, video two, TC in two. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to match the cable label to the port label. And we do so like this. Now, out of the back of the sandbox, we also have these two white DVI cables um, labeled side and center. And you're going to use these to plug into these monitors so that way you can look at what's being recorded without having to squint at those tiny screens back there. So again, we're just playing matching. So you're going to take the center one and uh, plug it into the center here. So we'll do this like so. And then we are going to do the very same thing with this guy over here. That's all plugged in. Ah, it won't turn on. What? Power. We have to plug the power cable in. This is the box with power cables and certain accessories in it. It says, keep with sandbox number two. Um, we only have one sandbox, so it's sandbox number two. But it's the only one. So we're going to open this box by lifting these levers, like that, and then what you're going to do is you're going to elevate the silver top and then move it away. And here is the power cable. So the power cable is going to go with the female end into the side of the uh, actual case right over here. Then the male end goes into the wall. All right, now we should see when we power it on, everything works. You're going to get blue screens. This will turn on. So now that we've got everything connected, we have to turn on the drives because that's actually where the uh, service is going to get recorded to. So we have to turn on these two racks here. Uh, these AHA, AJA, uh, Key Pro racks. These are where the actual drives are going to be, uh, and these are the drives. Now, when we record, we're not going to have all four drives here because two of them are going to record in this unit. The other two are going to record in these units over here as redundancy. So what we're going to do first is before we turn on uh, these two units, we're going to take the drives out, and you do that by pushing this button right here and then pulling it out. So keep the button depressed while you pull it out. Whatever you do, do not, under any circumstance, pull these out while the device is turned on because you will mess up the drives and it will ruin the recordings that is on there. So then you're just going to take the Sandbox 2 drives. Before you turn these on, you're just going to put them in. Side on top, center on bottom. And now we're going to hit the power button to turn them on. So it's just this guy right here. And then we're going to do the same thing 
down here. We're going to hit the power buttons on the unit and let those boot up. It's going to take a few minutes to boot up, maybe two minutes or so, um, and you'll be able to see the uh, progress of the booting. To see what you're recording uh, on the monitors up here, you're going to use this little controller down here, this RK300. And the way that this works is you've got two outputs, C and S, that stands for center and side, and then two other things here, C and S, center and side. So you're going to hit C next to output one, so that's flashing. You're going to hit C over here, so that's flashing. Once both of those are flashing, you hit take. And that will put the image up on the monitor. Now we have to do the same thing for side. So you're going to hit S until that flashes, S so that flashes, and then take again. And then that puts the image over there. The next thing we have to do is format the drive so that way there's no other recordings on there to kind of get confused with or so that we don't run out of space. There is never a time from week to week where we save what's on the drives. We format the drives every single week. If the drive does not format and there are still clips on the drive from the previous week, it will stop recording in the middle of the message because the drive will be full. To format the drives on here, we're going to hit the media button. Once the media button is blue, it will say format media, keep media. You're going to hit the adjust up button. Then it will say format. You hit adjust again. And then it says confirm, hold adjust up two seconds. So you're going to hold adjust up until it says formatting drive one. And you're going to do this on every unit. Unless you see this progress bar go, it is not formatting. I can't overemphasize the importance of formatting all four drives before you start recording. The process is going to be the same exact thing for the drives down here. Media. Adjust up. Adjust up. Hold adjust up for two seconds. And you'll see a progress thingy go. Now when it says that it's complete, you have to hit media again. And that will take you back into the main screen to record. So it says format complete. So hit media, and that will take you back to the main screen. Now that our sandbox is set up, drives are formatted and in place, what we have to do is set up the actual sandbox so that when you hit record on the sandbox, all four drives are recording at the same frame and also we want to clear out any cues from the last week so that way whoever is actually setting the cues doesn't have to delete them themselves they just start fresh. The first thing that we're going to do is sync the drives together and we do that by holding shift and then hitting the one button over here and then it will say select VTRs to gang so we're just going to hit one two three four they'll all be lit up and then you hit shift again. And this blinking one means this is the master and the other ones are functioning off of it. But this is what you want it to look like. The next thing we're going to do is clear the cues that exist. So what we're going to do is go to menu. You're going to use this jog wheel to spin the menu around until you see it say clear cues right here. So it's ST300 setup clear cues. Then you're going to hit this first button here. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure. So we're going to hit the second button here. And it's going to clear cue memories. So then you can hit escape to get out of the menu. And now we are ready to record. One button that we are never going to touch even though it's lit up is the blue stop button here. And the reason for that is because if you hit the stop button it stops the syncing between the four drives and throws them out of whack. So never hit this button, ever. If you do hit the stop button for some reason, what you need to do is enter in a time cue to go to and then go to that cue. So you would hit enter time and then you can enter in the time. So let's say 
you want to go back to 545. Well, that would be 17 four five zero 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 and then hit go to and it will send the uh, the the drives back to that time and you can hit record again but yeah don't ever hit the stop button now that the sandbox is set up and ready to record we're gonna start recording during the song before the video bumper and you do that by hitting the big red button that says REC on it that means record once you hit the record button, we want to confirm that the units are recording by looking at the record button, and they should have a red light in the middle of them that illuminates to let you know that the unit is in fact recording. Check all four. And also do a test recording before the service to make sure that uh, all the drives are actually recording. After you do the test recording, format the drives again. When you're actually recording, and the points of interest come up in the service, such as the start of the song before the video bumper, the start of the video bumper, and then the start of the message. At those three points, you're gonna wanna hit the mark button. And what that will do is it will put a mark in there so that way you can say, okay, go to Q1, that's gonna be the beginning of the song. Go to Q2, that's gonna be the beginning of the video. And then go to Q3, that's the beginning of the sermon. That makes it easier for you to find your place so you can get it just right. Now we're going to jog and make some cues. And if you get tired of this motion here, you can set it to shuttle and just have it play for you. What we're going to do now is find the exact frame where I come on screen. Alright, so there's my foot. So I'm going to stop it right there, because I know right at this, this is the last frame before I come on screen. So I'm going to set my mark. So now, if I want to go to that exact point, I just have to type in Q3, because this just happens to be Q3. So what I can do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to rewind quite a bit. And now I'm going to go to Q3. So on the keypad here, I just type in O3, and then go to. Now that I've entered my cue, I can hit the play button, and it will begin exactly where I've set my mark. Never in this process of playback do you want to hit the stop button, because it will desynchronize the, uh, the playback units, and they'll be off from each other. If you do happen to hit the stop button in the middle of playback, basically what you need to do is set a cue, go back to that cue, and then play from there. So it's a complicated process that is noticeable um, as a viewer because you will have to jump back a little bit. So don't hit the stop button. After you're done recording, you're gonna hit the stop button. And this is the only time it's ever okay to hit the stop button is when the recording is over. When you're done recording, setting your marks, setting cues, and everything is done here in the Richmond campus, you want to turn off the drives completely and then remove the drives. Because remember, you never remove the drive uh, from a unit that's turned on. But before you turn it off, you have to do something called dismounting the drive, which is basically internally disconnecting the drive. So let's take a look at how we do that. To dismount the drive, it's pretty easy. You just hit the slot button. And then when that green light comes off, the drive is dismounted. You can then power down the unit. And once it's completely shut off and there's nothing on the screen, you hit the eject button and pull the drive out. Now we're going to put the drives in here, but remember, you never want to put the drives into a unit that's on. So we need to safely shut down the unit first. And we do that again by hitting the slot button. And once the LEDs are off, power down. And then side goes on top, center goes on the bottom. 
and now you can turn them back on if you wanted to. So we want to power up and watch it now. So we're going to turn the units back on with the drives already in them because, again, you never remove or insert drives from a unit that is turned on. Now we're going to get into an emergency situation. If you are at Missouri City and you are watching the sermon and one set of the drives fail or there's digital noise or artifacts on the screen, um, there is a way to go from your primary drives, which are going to be Sandbox 1, to the secondary drives, which are Sandbox 2. It's very time sensitive. You want to do it as quickly as you can because there will be a jump back uh, in time when you do it. But let's take a look at exactly how we do it. If there's a mistake, we're going to switch from one set of drives to the other. So we're playing and then we notice things start to go wrong. So you're going to hit mark, then as quickly as you can, you're going to come down here, hit stop, slot, these LEDs will turn off, slot again, the other LEDs for the other drives will turn on, then you're going to hit go to and play. And that will set you back playing from wherever you set your mark. So the reason you want to do uh, this as quick as possible is because you want as little time between from when you hit mark to when you hit play so that way there's less of a noticeable rewind. Here at the Richmond campus when we're completely done recording, watching the entire thing all the way through, setting your marks and doing anything else you need to do, we're going to repackage it and then ship it over to the barn so they can take it to Missouri City Sunday morning. And also, don't forget that when you package the unit up, take the power cable with you. That goes in the box that says, keep with sandbox number two, and that goes to the barn as well. Shutting the unit down. You want to make sure that before you actually turn off the orange power button here, that your key pros are already off. And again, the way we safely turn the key pros off is by dismounting the drives using the slot button. And once you have no green lights lit up on either of your drive bays, you can safely power down the units. And then use this orange button here, the same one you use to turn it on. Shut it down. Some troubleshooting tips. The first thing you want to do to make sure that the recording is okay to be shipped off to Missouri City is to watch it all the way through with headphones on so that way you can hear to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the audio and that there's no digital artifacts that come up on the screen and make it look funky. Um, if you're not getting uh, playback or if you're hitting a button on the controller and it's not uh, sending any commands to the units, you want to make sure that your connections are good, so check the cables, make sure they're actually plugged in and the connections aren't loose. And uh, those digital mistakes or digital artifacts are caused by uh, dismounting or removing a drive improperly. So that would be taking the drive out while the unit is still on. Even if you've dismounted the drive, you have to power down the unit before you actually remove the physical drive first. And that's how you do it.